in the name of the God of the entire mankind, whose mercy is profound, whose kindness is to last forever. We are discussing in these episodes some of the misunderstandings that are there in the minds of uh, many Muslims with regard to how the hereafter is going to uh, happen and how Muslims are going to be treated there. It is extremely important to have the right kind of understanding about the life hereafter and how the Almighty is going to treat all humans because it is on the basis of that understanding that we are going to perform in this worldly life. Even if we have certain doubts about how the proceedings are going to be done and we have certain misunderstandings that we entertain in our minds, we will not be able to perform properly in this worldly life. And that is exactly what seems to be happening. But the Muslims, despite the fact that at least in the present days, they're not performing morally well, yet somehow they seem to be so very confident that as far as their hereafter is concerned, they are absolutely sure and comfortable that they are going to be successful over there. One of the uh, reasons why many Muslims believe that the hereafter is going to be uh, a, an occasion of success for them is that they believe that on the day of judgment, the Almighty is going to uh, draw scales and is going to weigh the good deeds as well as the bad deeds. And if the good deeds are going to uh, be heavier than the, the bad deeds, then the scale of the good deeds are going to ensure that they get heavier and enable uh, the person whose deeds those would be to enter the paradise. Now with this kind of an understanding also accompanies uh, the concept that since we Muslims, many of us pray five times a day, uh, we uh, fast in the month of Ramadan, some of the privileged Muslims go for Hajj pilgrimage, they pay zakat and uh, they remember God uh, every now and then. Uh, they believe that all these uh, rituals would enable them to ensure that they have as far as the scales are concerned a very heavy uh, weight of good deeds that are going to accompany them in the hereafter and even if those good deeds are accompanied by some bad ones like telling lies, like deceiving and cheating others, causing pain and inflicting difficulty and harm to others, uh, defrauding uh, and many other vices, even if these are committed, uh, they will still be rescued by the displeasure and punishment of the Almighty because of the concept of the scales wherein the prayers and the fasts and uh, the pilgrimages are all going to come to the rescue of such individuals and no, no matter how bad they may have performed in their worldly life as far as uh, their moral performance is concerned, uh, they will still be able to come out successful in the hereafter. Is it a true concept? The fact of the matter is that the Quran clarifies that on the day of judgment, uh, the deeds that are going to really carry weight are the ones which are just true genuine deeds. The Quran says in Surah Al-Araf, the seventh chapter, in verse 8, Wal waznu yawma is in al-haq. The weight that is going to matter on the day of judgment is going to be the weight of the deed that is going to be genuine. In other words, when we pray, when we fast, when we do pilgrimage, either our deed is genuine or it's non-genuine. If we tell lies, if we cheat people, if we cause difficulties for others and uh, do not have any remorse, any regrets in our hearts, in our conscience, then it is very likely that the rituals that we are performing may actually not be carrying any weight whatsoever. So it would really be a very tragic scenario when many people would go on the Day of Judgment before the Almighty's uh, court of justice and they would find that although they had pinned all their hopes on the kind of uh, ibadat worship that they had done, uh, while there they would find that none of those acts would carry any weight whatsoever. Because if we say prayers, but our prayers do not stop us from doing things which are obscene, which are evil, 
that the prayers are not actually doing their job. Likewise, fasting is meant to ensure that we inculcate within us taqwa, God consciousness. If God consciousness doesn't get inculcated, then fasting is uh, meaningless. It will carry no weight. The Prophet, may Allah's mercy be on him, also clarified that if a person while fasting doesn't stop from telling lies and acting upon them, then God Almighty is not interested in him leaving aside drinking and eating. He doesn't want him to be uh, uh, deprived of food and drinks uh, for no reason. So that what emerges from this understanding is that on the day of judgment, uh, it is going to be a case of whether a person has brought forth from the worldly life of performance any deeds which carry weight or is performed in the worldly life in a way that his deeds actually didn't carry any weight whatsoever. So that all that is going to matter on the day of judgment are going to be the deeds, even though they are very few in numbers, they are very small as far as the magnitude is concerned, but they must carry vazan, they must carry haq, and that haq is the genuineness of the deed. And genuineness of deed means that one is performing it in the, the right spirits and the deed is supported by the intention of pleasing God and performing well morally all throughout one's life. May the Almighty enable us to understand the proper concept of the hereafter and may He enable us to perform as best as could be possible.